Let me just read to you number 14. Let me find it. Verse 6 says, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake, And they spake all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it, it's an exceeding good land. God gave us this word a long time ago. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Now, don't miss the next part. Only rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Go ahead and find Second Kings chapter 3. In Numbers 14 right there, what, what the Lord is saying is, is something he's spoken to us before in the past. And the text is saying that they had searched out a land that they are aware of. And you're going to see come next week that they had been there before. And they searched out the land. They said it's a good land. There's lots of possibilities there. And if God delights in us, he's going to give it to us. But I don't want you to be freaked out with the attacks that you face. I don't want you to feel like you're under pressure when devils come against you. And typically, let me tell you, a devil is manifest in the form of a human being. But God is saying their defense is departed from them. They are bred unto you. Do not fear. Don't rebel against me in fear. Do not question. Do you not remember the stones? Now, this might be foreign to some of you. Please be here next week. I'm not going into it this week. But these are stones of memorial. This is what you see. God had spoken to us. God told me a long time ago, grab a stone from one of our properties. Take it with you wherever you go. I will testify of it next week. But this stone goes where we go. It doesn't go before. It doesn't go after. It will stay here until we shut the door and lock it for the last time. And then it will go with us to the next place that we go to. But the point is, is when you see the stones, the stones are to remind you of the work that God has done. His faithful delivering hand. That he's kept his word. That he's not quit when he started something. That there will be enemies that attack. There will be things that come against you. There will be hardships and things that come against you in this time. But if you understand that God delights in you. Then you must at the same time not fear. Understanding that the defense of the enemy has departed from them. And God's favor is upon you. Now I'm going to tell you now that the land we had searched, and there's more than one, but the one specifically that's relevant to us now, the land that we've searched, God has decided he's going to delight in us, and there's no defenseless devil from the belly of hell that can do anything about it. And I'm going to tell you the work of God shall come to pass, and many shall be saved and healed and delivered, and many shall be trained in righteousness and walk in great glory because God's hand is upon this people. Amen. But God spoke to me about ditches and I want you to flip to 2 Kings 3. And that was just this morning. I want to start at verse 11. 2 Kings chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 11. Can you play me the throne room song? That's what I always like to hear when I get a word rolling. It just comes to me every time. The music's relevant right now, believe it or not. Verse 11. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on his hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Edom, went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together 
and delivered them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. But, now bring me a minstrel as a worship leader. Somebody give me the tune going. Because once it gets to rolling, the word of the Lord's coming. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, You shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water that you may drink both ye and your cattle and your beast. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. Here's the point. When you put the two texts together, this is what I believe you need to hear. God has decided to increase us. In Genesis chapter 28, and I'll touch on it later, we'll see that the land we're moving to is a promised land of inheritance in which God promises to grow us in that place. Second yes. Kings chapter 3, we see the prophet saying of the Lord, make your valley full of ditches because God's going to send the rain. You're not going to hear the wind. You're not going to see the rain. There's not going to be any evidence that God is moving, but suddenly you're going to begin to see increase. Suddenly you're going to begin to see things happening and you're going to only be able to explain it by the hand of the Lord. To make your valley full of ditches, this is what God is saying. I want you to dig and prepare to receive. I want you to make place for what I'm fixing to send. In other words, put chairs in an empty building. I want you to go start painting. I want you to set up a class with a teacher in it, even though there is no students yet, because I'm going to send the rain, and I'm going to send the wind, and you're not going to hear it, you're not going to see it, it's just going to happen. And what God is saying is, now that I've given you this land, and now that I've delighted in you, and I've found favor in you, I want you to go to that land, and I want you to start digging. I want you to start painting. I want you to drag chairs in. I want you to hang your lights. I want you to get things in place. Tell your teachers to get ready, says the Lord, because I'm going to move, and you wouldn't even believe the things that I have in store for you. Make it full of ditches. God didn't say dig a little here, dig a little there. He said make it full of ditches. How many of you know that to the amount you expect the Lord to give you is the amount you will prepare to receive? You don't need to quit. I'm quitting soon. We're going to pray. <laughs> hey, listen to what I'm saying. To the amount we dig is to the amount... God will send increase. If we say, I'm not invested in digging, I'm not really concerned with it, watch at how you've snuffed out the work of the Lord. But maybe you said in your heart, I really believe that God has plans for this people. And I'm going to start digging. I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to print flyers. I'm going to prepare to teach. I'm going to find myself in position. I'll stand out in the front property and shout with a bullhorn and tell people to come. I'm doing something to prepare the ditches. When I go into the workplace, I'm going to tell them there's a new work in town. And it's mighty and powerful and God is going to set people free. Whatever you do, God is calling this church right now. To make this valley full of ditches so that he can send a wind and so that he can send a rain. Has he not been faithful the entire time? How many of you have forgotten the stones that were here in the very beginning? I'm telling you, I remember.
remember the stones. I remember the work of the Lord. I know what he brought us through. I know what we've been through. I know what we've lost. And I know what we've gained. I know the hurts we've had. I know the good times we've had. I've watched the increase. But I've seen the hand of the Lord. And that rock right there has been a part of all of it. And I'm telling you that rock right there has got a lot more days to come. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is not finished with Kingdom Life Church. God's calling us to dig. What, did they, what happened when they went to dig it? I'm not reading the whole text, but 2 Kings 3, do it. When you get time, go through it. Here's what happened. They, they started digging. At the word of the prophet, they started digging. Just like God said, they didn't hear wind. They didn't hear a rustle. They didn't see rain. But it came. They saw no evidence of it until it was there. They got up the next morning, their ditches were full of water. I woke up this morning... And I can't tell you how many people ask questions. What's the address going to be? How do I get there? Who are you? I've never talked to you before. I didn't see rain. I didn't see wind. People are already asking, where do I need to go? I don't know where that is. The rain is coming. We need only to dig. The rain is coming. We sow. God brings the increase. We dig. God brings the increase. God is calling you and I to get into position and actually believe Him for a great and mighty move. I don't want to limit God. The Bible says in the text, check it out, that their enemies... When they came to fight, they showed up and they looked down the hill. They saw the ditches that had been dug. They saw the water in the ditches. But from where they were standing, the sun was shining on the water. I said the Son of God was shining upon the increase. And to them, it looked like blood. And because it looked like blood, they thought there was a fight going on and the enemy left. I'm telling you now, as you dig and God sends the increase, that devil's going to come along. He's going to see the sun reflecting in the water and the blood is what it's going to look like. And because the blood and the water is in our ditch, I'm telling you that devil ain't going to lay a hand on us and we're going to see great increase and we're going to see a great move if we would dig. Who in here is with me on the digging? I tell you, I've been digging for a long time, every day, and I'm going to keep digging. And I'll dig alone if I must, but I know for sure that I must not. Here's the deal. There's a devil that wants to stop this work. The enemy knows that God has great plans for this house. And the enemy knows that God has an increase and a harvest. That's beyond the measure. But God knows that as we dig, he's going to fill it with substance from heaven. I said God's going to send the increase. And when the enemy looks at the increase, all he's going to see is the blood. Yes. Can we pray? I don't want to overextend this because next week I'm going to get extensive and lengthy. What do y'all find yourself on the carpet? If you're okay with being close to somebody, please come. We're going to pray as a unit right now.